It's another sunny day here in Florida, and we're going to smoke up a Boston butt today on the pit barrel cooker. Now, a few weeks back, I did this uh, apple juice brined, apple juice injected Boston butt, and we made some pulled pork. What I'm going to do today is inject this Boston butt with the jalapeno butter injection. This is going to be a lot of fun. Make sure you stay with me. I'm going to give something away today. Now, a few months ago, I did this apple juice brined and injected uh, pulled pork recipe. And so today, what I'm going to do is inject with this Tony Cachera's butter and jalapeno. Um, you know, usually you'll use this in turkey or uh, chicken, which is great, right? Um, but I've got it. It's in the fridge. It's just sitting there. And the apple juice one came out so nice that I thought we'd give this jalapeno injection flavor a try. So all I'm gonna do here is inject this uh, Boston butt up about every inch. Um, and, you know, I don't know if you can see that in the video, but if you've not used injections, you'll see the, the meat kind of swell up from the liquid. Um, and generally speaking, you'll know you've got enough in it when you start injecting and it, it's coming out other holes. I don't know if you can see that, but see how it's starting to come out the side, even though I'm injecting up here in the top? And it's been doing that the last two or three injections, so we've got plenty in this guy right now, okay? For my rub today, I'm using this Running Wild Pecan Butter, all right? I used this on some uh, uh, pork burnt ends. It turned out awesome. So what we're gonna do here, I said pork, what that really was, was pork belly. Just gonna season it up real nicely. You know, this is a thick piece of meat, so you can definitely put on a thick layer of seasoning here. And um, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do today. Um, if you'll watch this whole video, leave me a comment down below. You can be entered in a chance to win one of these pecan butter gourmet rubs. What we'll do is uh, use a random comment generator to select a comment. I ship it out to you. You don't have to pay for shipping or anything. And by the way, this is uh, the nice rub. This is uh, the 11 ounce. So this is not those typical, you know, two and a half, four ounce uh, rubs. This is a large rub. It'll last you a while. Okay. So you can see here, we about got him uh, all seasoned up. And I'll talk to you about how we're going to smoke this guy just a little bit on this pit barrel cooker today. Oh yeah, this is looking good already. Let's let this just sit right here for a minute. Now for my wood chunks today, I've got some peach wood here. Uh, give that nice fruit flavor. And then I've just got three pieces of oak. All right. So I'm going to get these over to this pit barrel cooker. All right. So we're going to put our wood in here. I've got this grate, the pit barrel folks sent me this accessory, so it opens up and you don't have to take the whole grate out. And I'm just going to uh, spread this wood around so we can get a little smoke going. Okay. Get this back on here like so. And the last time I made uh, pulled pork in here, or Boston butt, I hung it. We're going to use the rack today, all right? I'll let this go about an hour. And then we'll put a temp probe in it and continue cooking, right? This is going to be a long cook. Oh, one thing I forgot to do. If you want to make sure you get these rods back in here so you minimize the airflow and the temperature of this guy doesn't get too hot. And the temperature of our pit barrel today is running right at 250 degrees. It'll be perfect, right? Anywhere between 225, 275 will be awesome today. It's been three hours, 22 minutes. This guy's up to 172 degrees. And the pit barrel's uh, worked its way up in temperature to about 320. So what I'm going to do is take this guy off here and we're going to wrap it. So the trick is getting him out of here without spilling him. Okay. Looks like I'm going to be okay. We'll get this over to the table and I'll show you how we'll wrap it. So what I'm going to do now is wrap this guy up in some foil. 
All right, so let's fold the sides up like so. Now, I, I like to use apple juice, but I don't have any apple juice. I've got some hard apple cider that I'm going to put in here just to give it a little moisture while it continues to cook. Probably not even a quarter of a cup, right? And I am going to double wrap it. Come up like so, and like so. Now we're just going to get this back over this pit barrel cooker. So we're going to get this guy back on here, like so. We're going to get our temp probe back in here. Okay. Get our bar back in. Lid on. And I'm going to let it go on up to about 195, maybe 198 before we check it again. It's been four and a half hours. This uh, Boston butt's up to. 199, 200, probably the fastest one I've ever cooked, and it's my own fault. I was a little bit sloppy when I loaded this pit barrel cooker uh, with the coals, and it got hot really quick. In fact, it got all the way up to 400 degrees. So, we're nowhere near ready for this guy yet. It's still uh, the afternoon. So, I'm going to wrap it just like you would a brisket and put it in a cooler and just let it sit there for two or three hours until we're ready for it, okay? And we'll see how this fast cooked uh, Boston butt turns out. All right, this pork butt, Boston butt, it's been sitting in this cooler for about three hours. It's still amazingly warm. Um, like I say, this is one of the fastest cooked pork butts I've ever had. I did do one in the Big Easy Oilless Fryer. It was a little over three hours uh, but I can mention this was four and a half hours. Um, and it's all because, you know, I, I just didn't pay attention when I put those coals in the pit barrel. I got too much of that pit barrel going at once. And after about an hour and a half, two hours, the temperature started creeping up on me. Nobody's fault but my own. All right, so we're going to see how this turned out anyway. How is it hot? I guess I should have had some gloves on. Could have helped keep my fingers from burning. Color on this guy is beautiful. I don't know if you can see that. Let me get it off this foil. Well, the color on it looks beautiful. I mean, beautiful. Okay. Look at that, just it's falling right apart. Let's just shred up a little bit of it here. And uh, we're gonna make a sandwich. We're gonna give it a try. And I'm gonna got some special barbecue sauce here I'm gonna try on this bad boy today. Now, you know, the easier way to do this is put it in a big foil pan and uh, you don't have to worry about it falling off the cutting board and all that. You know, I just do it here. It just makes the video pictures look a little nicer. But let me just shred this up a little bit. I've got a bun toasting inside. We'll make up a sandwich. We're going to get some slaw on here. I'm going to get some barbecue sauce on here. I'll show you that. Let's give it a try. But it sure is juicy. I hope you guys can see that. I mean, it's just full of juice. So far, I don't see any downside for the quick uh, cook. Look at that. I hope you can see that in the, in the video there. Juicy, nice bar. Got some uh, smoke ring there. All right, let me get this sandwich made up. All right, I'm just gonna get some of this pulled pork on here. It sure is tender. It sure is juicy. It's still nice and warm. 
Okay, and I know some food person is going to say, oh, you should have gloves on. You're, you're right, I probably should, but guess what? It's just me and my son eating this, and well, he doesn't mind eating after my fingers here. All right, the barbecue sauce we're using, this sauce is awesome. Old Ray's Porkalicious, right? I can't tell you how many awards Old Ray's has won. Countless. He's out of Ohio, him and his wife, awesome people. I'm telling you, if you've not tried any of the Old Ray's sauces, I don't care if you buy them from Armadillo Pepper or not, you should buy some and try it. Absolutely delicious. Now, I didn't make this coleslaw homemade. I went to the grocery and bought it. Been working. But I can't have a pulled pork sandwich without coleslaw. All right? There it is. At least it looks good. We're about to find out if it tastes good. <laughs> You see we got our sandwich made up here. I'm gonna give this guy a try. Mm. Oh man. Let me have another taste before I tell you how it tastes like, what it tastes like. Okay, four and a half hours, just fine. It is so juicy, so moist. Um, somebody's going to ask about the jalapeno butter. I get a very, very faint flavor of the jalapeno. Not spicy. I mean, it's absolutely delicious. And I hope you saw in the video, extremely moist. I guess I learned something today. Cooking a little higher temp, even though I didn't try to do it, get no credit for it on this pit barrel cooker, it turned out just fine. The whole pork butt, six pounds, Boston butt, whatever you want to call it. I think it was, uh, I think I probably repeat myself. I think it was four and a half hours. I mean, it really turned out nice. And this Old Ray's Pork Delicious sauce, it's got kind of a, a Carolina uh, flavor to it with just a little spice. You get a little spice on the back end. Really great. Hey, thanks for watching another one of our videos and, and staying with us and, and watching this whole video. I hope you'll subscribe. If you're not a subscriber already, hit that bell. You'll be notified of all of our new videos. Make sure you leave a comment for a chance to win that rub we used.